Morning Year 4, it's Mrs Barlow. Your teachers have asked me to read you a story. Okay, so I'm going to read a story. It was written by David Walliams and it's called A Thing. Okay, and it has been illustrated by Tony Ross. So we've got some pictures at the beginning of the different characters. It says, say hello to Mr Meek. Mrs. Meek. Myrtle Meek. And a thing. This is the story of a child who had everything but still wanted more. Just one more thing. Prologue. Sometimes perfectly nice parents have children who are monsters. Meet the Meeks. This is father, Mr Morris Meek. As his name suggests, Mr Meek is a mild-mannered man. He likes to wear socks with his sandals and would not dare to eat a peach in public. Mr Meek works as a librarian. He loves libraries as they are quiet like him. This is a man who wouldn't say boo to a goose, or indeed any species of bird. This is mother, Mrs Meredith Meek. She wears her glasses on a chain around her neck. The most embarrassing moment of her life was once when she sneezed on a bus, and everybody turned around and looked. It will not surprise you to learn that she is also a librarian. Meredith met Maurice at the library. They were both so painfully shy that they never spoke, spoke a word to each other for the first ten years of working there. Eventually, across the poetry aisle, Maurice and Meredith fell in love. Some years later, they were married. And some years after that, they had a baby girl. This is their daughter, Myrtle. You might be thinking that nothing could be sweeter than a little baby girl. Wrong. From the moment she was born, Myrtle was an absolute horror. Whatever she was given, dummies, cuddly toys, rubber duckies, the baby demanded more. Myrtle's first ever word was more and she uttered it on the very day she was born. It was more milk, baby Myrtle was demanding, even though she had already guzzled a gallon. More was a word the infant would say over and over again. More, more, more. Being meek by name and meek by nature, Maurice and Meredith didn't dare stand up to their monster of a child. Because meek means someone who was quite quiet and shy and maybe a little bit nervous. Whatever baby Myrtle wanted, baby Myrtle got. Her parents bought their baby daughter toys and toys and more toys and even though she would instantly smash them to pieces, bish, bash, bosh, more, more, more. As a toddler, they gave their daughter crayons and crayons and more crayons. Myrtle would use them to scrawl all over the walls. Scratch! Before snapping them in two. Snap! Ma, ma, ma! As she grew bigger and bigger and bigger still, Mr and Mrs Meek would feed Myrtle chocolate biscuit after chocolate biscuit after chocolate biscuit. More and more and more. Even though Myrtle would take great delight in spitting the crumbs back in their faces. Part 1. More, more, more. Chapter 1. Howling. The years passed. Mr and Mrs Meek secretly hoped that their daughter was just going through a phase. But this phase was not one she ever grew out of. 
In fact, Myrtle's weight behaviour became worse and worse over the years. The nasty noughts turned into the dangerous, outrageous ones. Then followed the terrible twos and the tumultuous threes. After the fearsome fours and the frightful fives came the sickening sixes and the spiteful sevens. Then there were the egregious eights and the noisy nines. Oh my word, they were noisy. Now nine, Myrtle would wake her parents up every morning by howling. See there, she's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I want a teddy bear. I want a pony. I want a suitcase full of money. The girl would make such a din that the little Meek family house would rattle and shake. Books would fly off the shelves. Whoosh! Pictures would fall off the walls. Plaster would shower down from the ceiling. Poor Mr and Mrs Meek would be hurtled out of bed. They would scramble to their feet and immediately run around doing their daughter's bidding. They gave Myrtle everything. But everything was never, ever enough. Oh no, that girl wanted one more thing. Chapter 2. An Alphabet of Stuff Over the years, Myrtle's bedroom became so piled high with stuff, her parents had got her that you could barely get in or out. She demanded more and more and more. And she got more and more and more. Myrtle had at least one thing for every letter of the alphabet. A. Ant Farm B. Boomerang C. A cowbell D. A dog grooming set E. An elf G. Was a gravel collection H. A ham slicer even though she hated ham. I was for ice skates. J were a jar. K was knee warmers. L a lucky sausage. M a map of Belgium. N Nelson's column. O for owl fudge. P for painting. Q for quicksand. R for a remote controlled hedge which could reach speeds of up to one mile an hour. S for a stuffed flea. T for turnip shampoo. U for underpants for worms. V, venom. W, a wombat juicer. X for xylophone case. Y for yeti. And Z for zebra dung. It was the only thing she could think of that began with a Z. I think this girl sounds really spiled and I think her mummy and daddy need to tell her no. One thing Myrtle didn't have any of was books. Despite her parents being librarians, she detested books and thought they were boring. The girl had all this stuff, a universe of junk, but still she wanted something more. The funny thing was that she just didn't know what. Right, year four. We'll read some more later. Okay, bye for now.